Hello everyone. Welcome to the Disambiguation Station. A quick video about scavenging parts from old electronics. This is a power supply. This is an ATX power supply from a PC and it doesn't seem to want to power up. The test light doesn't yield any successful results. So let's see what, uh, by the way, this is a Dell power supply. Sometimes they're a little different. This one has like a micro ATX connector rather than the standard 24-pin uh, ATX connector, which is larger than this. Uh, and it also has a serial ATA power supply connectors. It has an old floppy drive connector and the additional 12-volt connector for the motherboard. So let's pop this open and see if we can get anything out of it that we might be able to use. These four screws hold the cooling fan, so we don't have to remove them yet. Now we've removed all the screws, let's see if we can part the case. There we go. And we'll pull the case off. Until we drain any residual voltage from the capacitor, we want to handle the power supply carefully. You can see here the pins of the capacitor exposed, and touching these could cause quite a shock if we don't drain the voltage first. There's the AC side of the board, and then we have the DC high current side over here, a bit of isolation between the two. So here's our IEC connector and the power in. There's a small transformer. Of course, this is a switching power supply. We've got some large inductors. Looks like we've got some large transistors down in there. And then we can see we've got various inductors over here, some smaller capacitors. Let's see if this capacitor has any power left in it. This is probably not a real safe thing to do. Now that we've shorted those leads together, we can safely assume that that capacitor is not dangerous at this point. Now, I don't see any other capacitors inside, so I think we should be okay there. Let's take these screws out and we'll take the board off the bottom. Now then, out it comes, yay. We'll go ahead and unclip the fan. There we go, it's a nice little connector. There's our fan. We can certainly, we can certainly use this fan if it's not worn out. Let's take that one out. We have a brushless DC fan. Looks like it's 12 volts and draws one quarter of an amp or 250 milliamps and it has a nice little connector on the bottom. Here we are, one piece. And there's another piece of sheet metal. We have our entire case now. So we'll set that aside. Here's the main board. We do have the IEC connector, which could be handy. So it's soldered on down here. I'm just going to clip it off for later use. There we have that. There's the ground lug. All right, so what's worth saving? Well, we really don't need the wiring. That's just in our way at this point. Let's try to get it out of the way. Pull that down. So here's our, probably the problem with this power supply. You can see that this capacitor is bulging. Can you see that? That capacitor, the top of it's bulging and some of the uh, electrolyte is leaking out. So that's probably, and this one's bulging as well. So those have probably all gone out of spec. Those are all bulging capacitors and would have to be replaced to repair the supply. Oh, there's another one. No, that one looks okay. That one's bulging, that one looks okay. So those capacitors are probably way out of their original values. 
and that's causing the supply to fail to pass its post test or fail to power up. So that uh, that's most likely why this power supply is not registering good when we press the little test button here. Um, that's a nifty little board. That's got an LED on it and a push button and a cap. So we can unplug that. Actually, let's leave it plugged in. What we'll do is we'll just nip these off and then we'll have a nifty little board with its own connector. So we can use that for something. All right. So we really aren't interested in the capacitors. I am interested in this large inductor though. So I'd like to get that out. And it looks like these are the pins for it here. But let's try to get in there a little bit deeper. So I'm just gonna short that and there's a little, it looks like a little ferrite around this gray wire. Let's pop that off and have a look. If I can avoid slicing my hand open, we might be able to see what's in here. So that's a that's a small ferrite. The wire is wrapped around three times. So we'll save that. Okay, so here's all of our wires. We don't need those. Now we can see a little better. There's a lot of this elastic in here. Everything's glued together. A couple of decent heat sinks. Those would be handy. And there's a small transformer. There's our large capacitor. Some pretty good toroidal inductors. A small inductor there. A little, some protect. That looks like a power resistor. Some protection circuitry. Some mobs. Uh, looks like a power resistor in there. So let's see what we can do. I may just cut the board apart before we try. Oh look, this is probably a thermistor of some sort. I would rather not have to do any more desoldering than I have to. So can we just break this apart? I'm really not concerned about some of the smaller pieces. There we go, we got a crack going. You can see a crack forming there. There we go. That gets us in there a little better. There's really nothing on the back side that matters. Oh, got it, okay. So there's a big heat sink. That would be pretty handy for some large applications. So let's see if we can take those screws out. Well, it looks like we're going to have to get in a little bit closer first. There. Now this uh, heat sink should just pull right off. Unless it's... Here it is. Okay, so that's just a small aluminum heat sink. Got heat sink material all over them. Then we have the bridge rectifier here. That should still be functional. And a larger three pin device here. Not really going to go to the trouble to desolder all these. I don't really need any particular transistors at this point. Let's see if we can get this uh, this large inductor out without damaging it, and then that other smaller one there. Okay, here we are in the vise. My inductor is there, and it looks like it's got four pins. So we're going to just try to desolder these. Maybe we'll use a little bit of this desoldering braid and see if we can pull some of that solder off of those. Let's just put this down, put it down flat. I've also got a handy solder sucker here. You depress the plunger, place it on what you want, press the button, and it sucks the solder right out. So let's see how this is going to work. So this will work for us. Melt the solder. Of course, you've got to have it clamped well in the vise. Now that's better. Let's try this again.
as you can see, that just about took the solder away from that pin. You can start to see down the hole. Ah, very nice. You can see that that hole is almost clean. And that lets it pop right out. Nice. Nice big inductor. All right, we have a smaller one here. Let's try to salvage that one. You can see that those are almost clean. This one is glued down a little bit tighter. Ah, but it comes off. Let's touch that, and there we go. We got it. Just straighten the pins back out. And there we have another inductor. Nice. All right. Let's see what else there is. There's really no point in saving any of this stuff. It's too difficult to take off, too difficult to identify, and too difficult to use again. These are most likely just optical isolators. I've actually got a box of those, so I don't really need them. Let's go ahead and see if we can save the big capacitor. It's only got two pins. Again, I'm clamping to this here, the transformer. So there's our two pins. Let's try and suck the solder off these. And I think we got it, we did. So that's a, four, a 220 microfarad, 400 volt capacitor. Always handy for something. There's a really large diode. That'd probably be pretty easy to salvage. There's a smaller diode there, and a couple more diodes here, a couple more power resistors, and a small capacitor. Here's a little IC. I'm not sure what that one does. Then we have the large transformer. So let's see if we can remove it. Uh-oh, one of the hazards. Ah, I dropped it, there it is. It looks like the plastic is sort of loose, but it doesn't look like we damaged it. We have the two pins on either side. I might try for this large diode. Oh, there it is. Now the other side of the board, this is the low voltage side. We have another large transformer, a smaller transformer. This looks like a power resistor. Yep, eight ohms, five watts. And there's another nice big inductor and a small one down in there. And then we have, of course, a thermistor of some sort here. Um, like quite a few things on this side, a couple of small coils. And of course the capacitors aren't worth saving. Another little coil there. All right, let's see what we can take off here. Let's try and take off this first. Okay, tomorrow is today. I'm having a little trouble removing this large transformer from the board. My small soldering iron, I don't believe, heats up quite hot enough to melt the solder all the way through these joints here. Uh, we're, we're giving it another shot. And by the way, this little piece of solder here is the last piece from an, a roll that I've had for about 20 years. I don't know the specs on this particular type, but it worked great. And I'm getting ready to start a brand new roll of Kester. So let's add just a little bit to that joint. Let's see if we can pull any off. Let's try the solder braid this time. Let's see if we can soak it up that way. If the iron will just stay hot enough, we'll be able to do that. That's working. 
Let's give it another try, move the space, and see what we get. Hmm. Those are just not coming loose. These did great over here, and these did great up here. But those there are not melting very well. Apparently, there's just too much thermal mass here, and my tiny little iron is just not able to put out enough heat to do a, do a decent job of these. I think we're going to have to yell uncle and call this a fail, unfortunately. Okay, so here are some parts we were able to salvage. A 12 volt fan, a nice aluminum heat sink, a couple of inductors, a bridge rectifier, a button, an LED, with a mounting bracket and a capacitor there, and a nice little cable, which disconnects. A five watt power resistor. A large diode. A transistor. Another an IEC connector with some protection circuitry, a small transformer, and a 220 microfarad 400 volt capacitor. And we do have several parts left over. If I can find a hotter soldering iron, I may be able to salvage some more of these. We've got some nice big inductors here that I'm going to probably try to just cut out with a pair of pliers. And of course, we've still got this thermistor here that we want to salvage. And a couple more large transformers and some small coils, maybe a couple of capacitors if they haven't gone bad. So that's that piece. And then on this other piece, we have a couple of transistors that I probably won't bother with saving, a couple of capacitors, some power resistors, a small transformer. So. We've gotten a few decent pieces off here, so I think that will be all for now.